Welly, welly, welly. This is actually a phenomenal little segue here because while I was grinding Chocolate Hawk and Code, I actually managed to get, you know, the, you know, the octuple amount of items. And I think this is the, I got my last Chocograph too. So, <clears throat> wow, it's amazing that you found so many, Koopo. But you need to stop. I'll go to business if you keep going, Koopo. I'll give you special bonus if you just quit now. Time's up. So I got a chocograph there, and because I ran out the clock, well I didn't run out of the clock, because I didn't run out of the clock, you get a big bonus. Look at that, 65 points, that's a whopper. That'll give us another level up too. And I believe that's the last chocograph we need, so, Choco says he can't find any more chocographs here for now. Yeah, basically you just get a little, little thing that basically just tells you, yeah, that's all the chocographs for this area for now. So you can see you get you can find nine in this first area. It's actually quite a lot. I think that's roughly a third of the Choco graphs. You know, spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the thing is, is that you can't get this one for a while. You can't get this one for a while, and we can't get this one for a while. We can get uh, these two not too long for now, but obviously, you know, spoilers. You need another ability. You know, Choco can do more than just walk in the future. Uh, you can't get this one right now. Can't really do any of these right now, except, uh, actually, no, you can't do any of these right now, so. Not immediately. We can't do it not too long from now, but yeah, I'll, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, here, actually, you not know here. Let me pause for a sec. I'm gonna BRB for a sec here. Okay, so, uh,. I think we had 65 points, right? So the formula for determining how many points you get is based on, it actually changes based on which area you're at. You know, spoilers, there's more than one place we can dig in the future, if that wasn't obvious. But uh, while we're in the forest right now, uh, this is the thing. So if we pick out a calculator, we had five seconds left. So it'll be five, and then it's plus eight for, you know, the with the choke bow we are right now. So we do five plus eight plus 13 times five. 65 points. Easy peasy, right? Nothing to it. And yeah, well, how many, you know, this format changes, you know, in the future based on, you know, it'll be, it'll be a different, like, multiplier for the field, like, if we're in a different area later. And the Choco type, you know, spoilers, but like I said, you know, we'll, you know, you can upgrade Choco, you know, I'll just tell you that much. And that dictates points you get too. So, yeah, uh, that's about it. Hey there everyone, my name is Mookie Shrapnel, and I'm guys Apple Games, back with some more Final Fantasy IX. Uh, and yeah, between last episode and this episode, I went ahead and, you know, did all the rest of the digging we need to do. I got all the choker graphs that were, uh, possible to get at this point. We can't really do any of them just yet, not for, you know, till we get through the next area, but, uh, I did find some stuff, actually here, let me quickly see. Got a, you know, got some fat loot. Look at how me, you know, look. God, look at the guy show greens we have. Holy crap, I forgot. You find them very easily from digging. Got a lot of potions now, too, which is nice. Didn't find anything big. I did find a, a big old cash sum, which I'll probably just slap on the screen now. And yeah, if we head on over here, we can see this little gate over here, and that's where Gazama Luke's Grotto is that we want to get to. Uh, I guess quickly, let me talk about the map, too, because I kind of haven't talked about it. I mean, it's not, you know, it's nothing big. It's just like, you have the little, like, the spotlight on the map shows where the camera's facing. The actual, like, blue thing shows where Zidane's looking, and then the glowing yellow dot is uh, Choco, obviously. So yeah, nothing crazy there. Gazama Luke's Grotto. No. Come on, get up. Damn it, say something. Oh man. The Black Mages, who are they? Uh, um. 
It's okay, you didn't do anything. Vivi, aren't they your... The king might be in danger. Come on! I sure hope Dagger didn't come here. Let's go. Yeah, this is a, a very... This is kind of what I was talking about before. Like, every dungeon in this game kind of has a, you know... Oh, I forgot you can get encounters in. Every dungeon in this game has kind of a, a theme with it. And this... And, like, this is really when the dungeons start getting really, like, really, like... Like, you know, like, forest and, you know, ice cave. You know, like, those are pretty, like, whatever. But, like, now it's like, you know, you got this place going on with its, like, pretty baller aesthetics. Doo, doo, doo. Ooh, these guys, yeah, they have this wool slash tech, this will do some damage. But since Vivi's back row and he has that cotton row, it's not that bad. Boom! That's also a lot of damage. Uh, let's see, I don't think this guy has anything. I don't think he teaches us anything if we try to eat him, but I mean, I might as well try. Nope. I think we've pretty much gotten everything we can eat for a while. Do, 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 boo, do, do. Nice potion that basically makes up for the damage you just did to us, so that's pretty nice. Hey, are you alright? Black mages. Couldn't do anything. We're here to help. We're on our way to Burmesia. Ugh. I'm done for. Take this bell and... Go to Burmesia. The Black Mages took our bells. The Kings and Palace, please protect. Hey! I'll protect him, don't worry. Gazamaluk Bell! So, yeah, you got. These are uh, key items for this dungeon. It's basically like. I mean, they're kind of keys in a sense, but each one has its own description. Oh, no, 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 no. There's couple different types of bells each one has a description so gazamaluk bell cherish this moment for happiness is elusive warning on the bell a key item in gazamaluk opens the bell door because yeah basically it's kind of a key dungeon you ring the bell at these doors you know the bell in your hand and the doorbell are ringing it causes the bell in the door to ring and then for some reason the thing shatters which i mean it, you know obviously you can say that's a very <laughs> Very crappy and inefficient key system, but like, goddamn, is it cool though, right? I mean, come on. You can't tell me that's not cool. Kill! 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 Arrgh! Hey, look, it's those guys again. Who is that? That I don't know. I know I have seen him somewhere before. Somewhere before I have not seen him, I know. I guess it is not important. Let's kill him. Yes, kill him, shall we? And yeah, we get to fight black mages for the first time. They're not too tough, but they can be a little, um, spooky. Funny thing is, uh, if you're... They're not too tough, but if we're talking from the perspective of the Excalibur 2 Perfect game, these things are a nightmare because this is a forced encounter that gives us experience, which otherwise you don't really have any easy way of dealing with right now. Oh, he's in Blizzard. Woo. Yeah, they're not too tough. Like, that's less damage than, like, the ladybugs are doing. But, I mean, that's because we have that fire weakness. But, uh... Uh, you know, let's toss out a Mustard Bomb. See if it... Steve is six. Mustard Bomb isn't very accurate, so... It's not super likely it hits, but Quinna doesn't really do that much right now anyway. It's like, these guys are humanoid, so Quinna can't eat them. Because, you know, Quinna can't eat humans, so... No, that's a miss. You can tell because it very, you know, it's very obvious when you when it hits because they're like, looks like they're on fire. Oh, so it's funny we got our trance here, but Quinna can't eat these guys, so it doesn't really do much. The damage is good though because it still ups Quinna's damage, obviously. Uh, so let's see if uh, boom, do 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 do. Yeah, these guys are pretty pretty basic though. Like they just, you know, they. Uh, I mean, I guess they just have access to the three, you know, standard magic spells, and then they can, uh, you know, they can smack you sometimes. 
But yeah, because this is a forced encounter, this is why you need to get the needle fork in a normal playthrough, because you have to petrify these guys with the needle fork. Which is, you know, kind of a nightmare. Because I forget what the chances of actually petrifying. It's very low. It's only like 10% or something. So, like, what you end up having to do often is you put Quinn on the back or you just have her, you know, stab them a bunch until you get lucky and they petrify. And you usually end up having to throw potions at them because, like, the Scabber 2 perfect game is fun like that, you know. Hee! Savage monsters they are! Run away! <laughs> yeah, this is, um, I think this is, I think I already mentioned this, but, like, this really is, like, the kind of the point of the game when the difficulty really starts to pick up, like, oh, this guy, so this guy's funny, he kind of follows us, kind of, but not quite, by the way, uh, when you, you know, leave, and you can come back here, and if you come to this guy, offer a silent prayer, but you can actually check his body, sorry about that. I can get another bell. And this is actually super important because you kind of need this bell if you want to unlock all the doors. You don't need it, need it, but like, it, help, it it's nice because it means, you know, you can open all the doors. Like, not all the doors are mandatory is the thing, but, you know, it's kind of the shtick. Uh, ooh, jeez. Two of them, huh? Alright, so... We'll have Vivi fire all. I'm going to wool slash right away, eh? That's gonna do some damage. Ouch. Got some ore. Hopefully for that. Ouch! Hey, calm down, guys. Bam! Not too bad. You can see that even Vivi's damage is kind of falling off now, too. Boom! So I'll have Quinn eat that guy just to finish it off, because that's what's nice about Quinn's eating. Like, Quinn's damage is random, but, like, eating means you can at least, like, get, like, well, you know what I mean? Like, you at least get that little bit of, like, extra guaranteed, like, oh, wow, is that even miss? Jeez. Okay, Freya won't take that much damage, because back row is strong. But, yeah, the eat, like, makes it really easy for Zidane, or for Quinn to kind of keep some consistent, like, Enemy is almost dead, I can at least guarantee I finish it off. Like this. <laughs> Funny how I'm using this a lot more than I expected to. It's nice though. Tastes bad. I mean, it never hurts to use it if you know it's gonna finish them off, because, like, you know, like, maybe they have a ability you haven't eaten them before and you just don't remember, you know? Do, 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 boo, do, 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 do. But yeah, this black mage here, this guy actually, like, he's an optional, like, he's an overworld encounter, but he's optional, because he kind of just moves around. You can kind of avoid him. And the funny thing is, he actually stays here for quite a while, I think. I forget, like, he does disappear eventually, but I forget when. It's like, it's like not disc 2, it's like disc 3 he's gone or something weird. I don't even remember. And, like, the funny thing is, because of that, the Jure and the Excalibur 2 perfect game, once again, you kind of have to just avoid him a bunch. Because you come back through here a bunch. Alright, let's just... Oh, wow, nice damage, Zidane. Might not be able to just kill these guys. These guys can be a little annoying. Yeah. They're not too tough. They, they die pretty easily. But they have, uh... Some big damage. Or, some nasty, like... They can, uh, berserk us. Which, actually, now that I think about it, it isn't really even that bad, is it? It can be. It sucks that they berserk Vivi, obviously, but since we have all these Geisho greens, it's not that big a deal, I guess. So, yeah. They don't, uh, like, you can see, like, they kind of stop and look around a bit. They're, like, that guy's not super good at following us, but, like, you know. So, we can break this bell, because if we come over here, we might actually get an encounter, yeah. Generally, all the optional doors will give us goodies, which, you know, pretty typical fare for a Final Fantasy game. Ah, uh, more of them. You know, I'm not gonna do this fight. I'm gonna run away. Because I forgot to- I didn't get a chance to change my equipment. Hey! We got a quick run. That works out perfectly. Get an extra bit of gill. We're actually really raking in the gill. Like, man. I almost feel a little bad. It's like I did, like, all the tricks and stuff. Now, like, money's just not even gonna be an issue. But, I mean, you know. Uh, so we got this. Uh, yeah. So we can get, you know, undead killer for Zidane. Uh, let's see here. 
He's got add status, so we can just slap on. Let's just slap on the steeple hat for the strength and defense. That seems like a good idea. Freya's already almost got uh, Insomniac. Once we do that, we can start swapping around stuff pretty soon. Let's see what our stuff is, because the zombies mean that uh, you know we actually have a need for undead killer. See, the funny thing is, a lot of like we have bird killer. Those things are those like bugs or insects, but they fly, so they count as bird killer too. Like they can say why like, bird killer is just so good, right? Uh, Unman either works for the dudes. There's not really any dragons, so we'll just do this. Uh, don't really need anything else for Quan, so yeah, let's just go. I think there's an item here. Get a bronze vest for Zyadane. But the thing is, we already actually have one, right? Oh, I went to the wrong thing. That's the, yeah, that's what we got. It's like, you can see, like, this is where you usually pick up a bronze vest, but I kind of forgot you could get one in the industrial district earlier. This guy's another thing, too. Like, he's like, you know, please take this belly, you know, please protect Promethea. And he kind of sits there, but he doesn't die. And, like, the thing is, is that, um... Yeah, we get another warning. He actually, like, I think once again, like, he doesn't actually die for a while. I think we come back here later, he's still just chilling here. Like, he disappears at the same time that the Black Mage does. So whenever that is. The encounter rate in this dungeon is pretty high, relatively speaking, but it's also a really short dungeon. Like, this dungeon is basically just two rooms, basically. So, like, yeah. Uh, since we have Undead Killer, watch how much damage this is about to do. Wham. Yeah, these guys are pretty strong, though. Boom! 296. Uh, let's just kill it. That seems a good idea. Instead of focusing fire, you know, just do that. Get that damage in. Do, 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 do. See if Zidane was Zidane fast enough? He was. Boom! Take it out. The dungeon only has a couple encounters. I think I think those we've already seen all the encounters for the most part. It's just the skeletons and the bugs. And obviously the black mages, but they're like overworld encounters. They're a little different. Let's see if I can avoid this guy actually. I don't want to fight him just because like. Like we already know what they do, and it's kind of funny. Like you, you walk up to him, he goes, kill, and then you know, that's that. Ring the bell. Like, I, I just love this mechanic of just, like, conceptually of just ringing a bell in a door and it, like, opens the door. So this is the long way around, but because we take the long way around, there's items on the staircase, obviously. You know, big surprise. Oh, you know what? I remember now. If you kill that black mage, you get a bell. But if, but it, it's like funny, it's like they purposely program something in to allow you to avoid that encounter, right? If you couldn't get the, if you couldn't skip the fight by grabbing the bell from that soldier in the first room, you would have to fight that guy. But for whatever reason, you know, these develop, the guys who made this game are insane and just always included like roundabout ways to get around stuff. Yeah, you can see the encounter rate in here is pretty high. It's actually scary because this room is where we'll see potentially see the last encounter in this area, which is a very scary enemy, which I think we're about to see. Yeah, this monstrosity, Lamia. These things are, like, probably one of the strongest encounters we'll see for a while. These things are quite nasty. They they stop doing that, that much damage, but the thing is, we'll see why they're scary in a little bit. I'm actually going to throw out a mustard bomb again, because if we're lucky, we can insta-kill it. If we're lucky. Now, since they're like a big lizard, they're weak to ice, but since they have a, you know, you can see they didn't do that much damage. So they're, they're fast, for one thing, and we'll see, they'll start doing some nasty things if we're unlucky. But uh, if we're lucky, on the other hand, maybe Mustard Bomb will connect. I think Mustard Bomb's hit chance is like 30% or something. Yeah. Plus, you know, whatever Quinn's stats are versus the enemies. Yeah, this is why it's scary. So first of all, it can heal itself. And, like, that just healed off all the damage you just did, so that sucks. And it counters very often with stuff like Might, for example, which makes it stronger. I might actually have to start running from this, because this thing's already getting scary. 
is the thing. Like, bam, that just did a lot of damage there, and it's gonna get stronger as the fight progresses. Where? See if Freya can jump on it? Nope, it's gonna entice. See, this is one of its scary spells, too. It has Entice, which uh, acts as a confusion spell. The funny thing about Entice, though, is that it's a gender-based Entice, or it's a gender-based spell, like, I mentioned, I think I mentioned? It's a gender-based one, so, basically, male party members will get confused by this guaranteed, I believe, but female members won't. So Freya is immune to this automatically, and since Quay is genderless, it just kind of treats it as anything that's, like, gender-based, usually just, just like, yeah, okay, whatever, let Quenna get affected by it. So in this case, Quenna, you know, really likes giant lizards, you know. Yeah, here we go. Now it's starting to get dead. It might actually just Oko one of us now. This is the thing. Once it mites like two times or more, all of a sudden it's like, now it's gonna like kill us. Ooh, yeah, that's back row. Right? Look at that damage. Oh no! I'm gonna attack Quinn and hopefully, like, you can eat it. But I don't know. Come, on, someone get an attack off, please. Like, it just has a bunch of stuff, and most of it, a lot of it, is like counters. Oh my God, you're kidding me! Thank you, Freya. Christ almighty, that thing is scary when it gets going. And it has a surprising amount of health that's playing the game, right? It has about a thousand health right now, I think. Let's go to AP. It doesn't even get that much experience, but, you know, it's two AP, so... We can go ahead and uh, swap out our gear again, I think. I think Freya just got Insomniac? Yeah. So let's swap out, start swapping our equipment. So we can get rid of that. Uh, let's see. We can start giving Quinn a... Gold Ring for Insomniac. Did Zyden get anything yet? Not really. Uh, let's see. This gives them better stats, but it doesn't really give them anything else. But there's not really any Earth attack right now, so we'll just put on the Glass Buckle for now and see what else. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Alright, so let's potion up, you know. Because as you can see, right, this fight, that fight, you know, like, freaking, it was doing, like, 200 damage at that point. That's scary, right? I believe under the stairs here, if we don't get another encounter again. A Magus hat! I think this gives VV slow? Yeah, that's our first, his first thing. And he raises his elemental damage. That would have been nice for that fight. Yeah, sure, why not? Do, 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 do. You can see this bell over here, and there's a Moogle. Darling! Can you hear me? Darling! Please say something! I didn't expect to see a Moogle here. What's wrong? My husband! He's inside this bell! He's trapped, Koopo! You poor thing. We just held our wedding here. Then some scary clowns attacked us. I was so scared, Koopo! This bell is huge. I don't know if we can lift it. Hmm. No, please! Huh? Sniff, sniff. I'm not. I'm not voice acting this. Just let it sniff. H hello. Um. Oh. Oh. Wait. Yeah. It's you. I know you. I know you. I know you. Um. 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 Hey. 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 You have Koopo Nut? Yeah. I got one in Lum Lum. Really. 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 C can I have it? <laughs> I forgot you can say no here. I think if you say no, nothing happens though. It's so, like. I'll show that off though, because pro it's probably funny if you say no, she'll probably just get mad. Koopo! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Darling, darling, I have yummy Koopo nut! <laughs> uh, Koopo, darling! Koopo, I love Koopo nuts! Darling, where are you going? Uh, um, thank you! Darling! What a crazy couple. 
<laughs> I love that even during stuff like this, I can get a little, you can get a little comedy, you know. But a funny thing, since we didn't open this door here, if you walk back over here, you'll get a quick little scene that just shows us, you know, it's locked, and then we get pushed on back. Kind of funny. All right, so with this bell, we can open up this door right here. Ring the bell. Dingling. The bell in your hand and the doorbell are ringing. Shatter. Do 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 do. I love Koopo Nuts. Do you like Koopo Nuts? Not really. I hate you. <laughs> do you like Koopo Nuts? Not really. I hate you. Do you like Koopo Nuts? Yes. I like you. <laughs> Thanks again. Now we can go on our honeymoon. There's a letter from Mudon. It's probably a letter of congratulations on our marriage. Let's read it, Koopo. From Mudon to Mogmi. This year's Festival of the Hunt was so exciting, Koopo. The highest score is 112 points. A woman named Freya won the title. Last year's winner, Belna, only got 74 points. Oh, it was so much fun. Yeah, that was the letter I was talking before. I forgot that you got, you got it this soon, yeah. Like, Belna's points is always, like, roughly two-thirds of the winner. I actually forgot, yeah, it, it says a woman named Freya, so I guess if Zayden or Vivi wins, it's a different message. Huh. God damn it, that means I'm going to have to show this off. Bugger. It wasn't a congratulation letter, but it was fun to read, Koopo. So yeah, let's go ahead and tent up. And uh, we'll go ahead and save here. Because uh, you'll want to you'll wanna save here. I definitely recommend that. Alright, save here. I mean, I guess it, since I have to replay through this whole area with Quenna, it's not really that big a deal. Or without Quenna. Sure. So... We've got this whole area around here, right? And you can see, like, there's this vine here. And we can actually climb this rope. It's dangerous outside, Koopo. Yeah, he'll actually warn us if we try to climb here. Because this will take us back to the world map. It takes us to an area right above the grotto, basically. And in this area, uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Like, they warn you, so, like, it's not ever going to catch anyone off guard, obviously. But I always thought it's kind of funny they do this, so... That is where the entrance was. This is kind of like in like a little mountain area, right? Kind of above here. And if you kind of run around here, especially like if you run out on the grass. If you run on the forest, you'll find a different enemy. But if you run on the grass here, you know you'll get to meet a, a nice looking enemy. Oh, look at this thing, man! Doesn't he look fun? And he'll go ahead and just like one shot everyone he attacks with 2,000 damage. I guess, you know, another thing about it, if we got lucky. Uh. Oh god, he just venomed Zyday, and that means Zyday can't do anything anymore. I guess if we were lucky, Quenna could mustard bomb it, which would be kind of funny. Imagine if this works. If this works, I'm not saving, because, yeah, if you couldn't tell, this is not an encounter we're supposed to get right now. This thing is way above our pay grade. Hey, we actually ran, though. How much money- like, watch how much money we get from Flea Guild here. 260. Like, that's a lot of money for- that's, like, almost more money than we're getting from killing stuff. But, uh, yeah, since we actually ran away, that's kind of funny. I guess I'll get- I'll show off the other enemy that's out here. Cause I'm not re I'm gonna, I'm gonna game over on purpose because like I don't want to keep this. So if you hang, yeah, you can see Popo's Heights. If you run around the grass, though, you get a different encounter in here. Actually, what, wouldn't it be funny if we found uh, another encounter? Nope, we didn't. But that's a good thing because now we can get killed. So that thing we just fought was a grand dragon, you know, as if it wasn't, you know, endgame signing enough. Now we can fight in the forest Garudas, you know. <laughs> These things have uh, a couple spells. They can actually cast stop, but the uh, thing is, 
Stop isn't even that scary, I guess, right now. Now I think about it, wouldn't it be funny? Yeah, I saw a hypo. You know, I'm gonna throw out another mustard on because, like, at this point, like, screw it, you know? Wouldn't it be funny if I actually got lucky? This thing is fairly high level, so I imagine the chance of actually hitting this is very low. It's probably only, like, 10%? Yeah, like, you can see, like, it just misses. I guess, fuck it, let's just, maybe I'll run. Yeah, Firaga, hey! We'll get an early bird cameo of what this spell looks like, eh? Just dead. And we got a high potion and some ore. I mean, screw it. Throw out more mustard bombs, wouldn't it be funny? That's what I'm saying. Nah. Magic accuracy is heavily based on your level and your magical magic stat, so since Quinn's magic is, you know, naturally not super high right now, you know, it's and these things are super high level compared to us. We're not really getting much from uh, the way of steel like I don't even I, I I mean I don't know what the chance of this really hitting is, but it's probably pretty freaking low. Yeah, miss. Wouldn't it be funny if Zyden gets stopped here and then Quinnan nails it? Last chance! But yeah, as you can imagine from this area, like, getting experience here is actually great if you know what you're doing. Because there's tricks you can use, even though you can obviously see these things have a lot of health and they're doing insane damage. Like, O killing us, he's like, that's a party wipe right there. Like, just a thousand damage. But the thing is, is that if you know what you're doing, you can actually kill these guys. Like, the Grand Dragon is, like, the one that people generally go for. But the Grudos are even easier if you really know what you're doing. And there's good tricks you can use. But, yeah, anyways, uh, I guess I'll just... I have to reset now, so I'll cut back to that because the music's glitched. So, yeah. See you in a little bit. Alright, we're back. So, uh, let's take one last look at our equipment. So, uh... Because, you know, if you if you couldn't tell, we're about to fight a boss, so... You know, you want to equip, you know, good stuff. Wanna, especially, I'm going to, you know, really accent this point. Make sure you have either the headgear or... Uh, some sort like, either the headgear or glass armor. Because, let me tell you, as a kid, uh, this boss... I'm going to tell you right now, this boss that we're about to go up against was my, uh... He was my wall for a long time. I was stuck against this boss for weeks, and it's because, you know, I was a kid... And I was stupid and didn't think about my equipment. But yeah, like, the difference between headgear, you know, having the magic stuff and not having it is, you know, huge. Like, Freya I don't think has an option for this, which is why she kind of gets screwed. Oh no, she gets a bronze helm! You know what? Actually, uh... That's great, because we can get Bug Killer... It's, the boss can't blind us, and we're not going to level up, so we might as well get that. The magic defense goes down by one, but this gives us half magic, or half water damage. And the boss has water magic, so that's great. I forgot everyone has access to stuff. Alright, so let's go over our equipment, or our abilities, too. So, the I will, I'll tell you right now, boss floats, so bird killer, great. Uh, boss doesn't really have anything else of note. I mean, there's no point to having Fleagill, but I don't really need anything else. We'll definitely want HP, uh, yeah, that seems like a good idea. Uh, I'm not gonna bother with cover. We'll put Freya in the front row, so yeah, we'll have her do that stuff. Uh, she doesn't really need cover right now. No one's, no one in this party is particularly frail and like... Well, I mean, why not? I mean, we have all these abilities we're not really using anyways, so... Just take this off and put on cover. Because, you know, because Freya only covers people at low health anyways, so maybe it'll be nice. Uh, Quinn doesn't really need anything either, but, you know, it's nice. Uh, yeah, and then when we try to leave... Koopo, wait! Koopo! Koopo! Take this, Koopo. And give this a holy bell. Give me Koopo Nuts again, okay, Koopo? I'm Koopo for Koopo Nuts. Yeah, wink, wink, you know. Nice joke there. Nice reference to... You know. <laughs> a key item in Gazamaluk opens the holy door. Holy bell, the angel is ready to fly. 
Follow your heart and fly away. Message on the bell. Let's do... Let's save once, man, since we just changed our equipment. All that jazz. You know, so I'm not dying. Because this boss is pretty tough, especially if you're not super high level. Like, we're not... I wouldn't say we're... We're, we're not over-leveled, but we're definitely not... I mean, we're not under-leveled, I mean, but we're definitely not over-leveled, you know? Like, I would say generally at this point in the game, most people are going to be still... Like, unless you've been going out of your way to fight stuff, you're probably still going to be single digits. Like, you'll be... Level 9 is actually pretty average, I would say. If we're lucky, we can get out of this room without an encounter. Wow, we got an encounter quick, though. That sucks. Oh, well, that's not a big deal. It's gonna be a Lamia, yeah. So we're definitely we're not fighting this crab. You kidding me? Get the hell out of here. Let's defend. Let's deal with siding. Oh, I forgot to put Freya in the back front row too. Say, Qu Quinn is not spinning around, but that's because we're running, which is kind of a funny thing. Un unlike in a. Uh, Watch, I don't know. Cause I, I know that, like, in Final Fantasy VII, for example, if you run away when you're confused, your characters are kind of spinning around anyways, and it looks kind of goofy. This game kind of doesn't do that, I guess. For better, for worse. Because, I mean, it does look goo- it, it's kind of funny to look at, you know. Yeah, before I walk in, let's put Freya in the front row there. Uh, what's Quenna gonna be doing? Quenna doesn't really- nothing Quenna does is particularly useful here. I don't think the boss is vulnerable to defenseless. Uh, they don't have enough for Mighty Guard. Aqua Breath doesn't do anything. Aqua Breath is percentage based, so it doesn't work on bosses for the most part. Uh, Limit Glow. I mean, Pumpkin Head might come in handy, but for the most part, Quinn is just gonna be stabbing stuff. Maybe I'll toss out some frog drops, because now we have five frogs, so Quinn will do. Nah, that's not really worth it. Maybe Vanish, because the boss does have some nasty physical attacks. So, like, I guess we're. This is probably about good looking for now. Yeah, alright. Uh, yeah, let's just head on in. Are you alright? Freya, please be careful. Master Gazamaluk has gone mad. He's being controlled by some strange clowns. I love the intro to this fight. Like, it's like the thing just kind of swoops into the water and the camera's just jutting around like you just have no idea what's happening. Bam! Hey look, it's Master Gazamaluk. So yeah, this guy, he's uh... You know, I'm, I'm just gonna tell you right now, he's, he's no joke. This guy is rough. I would say this is definitely the first really hard boss in this game. Like, he has a lot of things going for him that make him tell. Like, look how much damage he does. Like, he, you know, like, that's a lot of damage. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? We got a Magus hat. Oh, did I? Yeah, there we go. Slow. So let's try slow on him. No. Bam. Nice dodge, though, Freya. Quinn is playing a potion, because, I mean, I, I, I would recommend that for this fight, like, depending on what you're doing, like, Quinn is good for healing, keeping people topped off with slow. This boss doesn't have any... Ah, uh, missed, damn it. Yeah, slow has, like, 60% accuracy base? Oh, yeah. See, here's the thing with this boss. This boss has a lot of counters, and he'll counter pretty much anything Vivi does, like, magic base, with silent voice. We actually get lucky to miss, though, which is kind of fun. That, that's pretty rare. That's kind of funny. Bam. This boss has a couple really good things to steal, though. One thing in particular, he has a weapon for Vivi, which will give him new magic, which, you know, we haven't had access to for a while, so that's nice. Hey, we actually got it really quick, too. That's sick. Let's go. All right. I don't really care about anything else at this point. So let's just, uh, yeah, let's just beat him up. I don't think he has anything else to steal. I'll quickly check. Yeah, there we go. We got a slow up. So I'll, I'll detect. Just for funsies. Let's get a potion off. Like, yeah, pretty much for this fight, it's just fr have Freya and Zidane attack, and then Vivi and Quenna should just be support. 
Because the thing is, is that Gazamulk actually has higher magic defense than most enemies up to this point. So Vivi's magic isn't going to be doing much damage, is the thing. We'll quickly detect, see what's up. Do, 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 do. Oh, he has an elixir. You know, I do not care about that elixir. We got the steel, which is kind of the important. We got the weapon, which is like the big thing. Ah, oh, fuck! Yeah, see, look at that. Like, look how much. Like, he just wiped out Freya. We couldn't even do anything. You know what? This is a good time for a high potion. And we'll just start attacking with Zidane and Freya. So since he tends to counter with physical attacks, it actually wouldn't be a bad idea to vanish with Quina. I might actually do that. Let's let him go off here, see what he does. Man, it's funny, he, he I, I mentioned he has water spells. He has yet to use a water spell. He's just been smacking us, which is kind of funny. So let's... Yeah, we'll, we'll vanish Freya, because she's... Her defense is lower than Zaiden, so she's the one getting messed up. Plus, she's doing more damage right now, too. That's Vanish right now. What, what cool thing about Vanish in this game is that uh, when you Vanish someone, the person turns invisible, but their weapon isn't, which is kind of a cool detail. Wham! Like, what damage? You know, that's some good damage. And Crash will miss, guaranteed, thanks to that. Oop. Zaiden's doing good damage too, though. But yeah, he, he counters almost like, I think his counter rate is like 50%. It's very high. He almost, he just did more than half Zaiden's health. So yeah, be careful. Wow, he's really just using Crash. That's crazy. If I was a kid, I'd be in love with this scenario, because normally you get messed up by this guy just... Because, uh... This guy isn't... Uh, I mean, well, I'll show it off in the thing, but, uh, I mean, I can just... I don't even know. I'll just heal Vivi, I'll attack with Zidane, and then we'll just see what happens. do 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 ba do ba do Is he gonna crash? No. That slow comes in handy. I think slow is like two-thirds effectiveness. If you know what I'm saying, like they're roughly like two-thirds the speed. So, you know, we'll generally get around two attacks for, for his one, but since he counters a lot, it's not as helpful as you might expect. Crash. So we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll just attack with Ziding. I think he's actually almost dead. I'm actually shocked. This is insane luck, actually, all things considered. Is he dead? Oh my god! We didn't see a single water spell from him! What the hell? What is that luck? He's dead! That couldn't have gone better! That was like the smoothest Gazamaluk fight I think I've ever had! So the thing with Gazama, uh, you know, I'll, you know I'll, I'll save it for the extra video, the bonus video or whatever, the half. That's crazy. So he gave us 5 AP, which is nice. So we just got Jelly and Undead Killer. Got a tent and some good cash. Wow, that's insane. Holy crap. Hmm. What happened to Master Kazama Luke? We must hurry. His Majesty is in danger. Yeah, we don't actually get to learn too much about Kazama Luke. We just know that, you know, this is Kazama Luke's grotto and. Apparently he was affiliated with the Burmesians in some way, but now you know, now we're sticking over to Steiner's POV here. Grand Citadel, South Gate. Once we cross this gate, we are in Alexandrian territory. We can quickly take a second to take a look at Steiner. He's level five. You can see, like, man, Steiner's weak now, eh? Let me give him the linen caress, though. The linen. Curaz? The linen? I don't know. The thing. He almost has Beast Killer at this point, so we're not going to take that Moonstone off just yet. I just love him walking around with his bag. Whee! 
Hold it right there. What is the purpose of your visit? I heard workers were needed to fix South Gate. I bought my belongings so I might live and work here. That's great! They've been working on the gate non-stop since the accident, but it's still broken. I need to check your bag. Rules and regulations, you know. Steiner seems unnerved. Would you step back? There, that's good. Sorry, just doing our job. So, where are you from? Blast, I must do something. The police are searching for a girl and a middle-aged man. Did you see a pair like that on your way here? This knot is really tight. The girl supposedly looks exactly like Princess Garnet, the most beautiful princess ever to grace Alexandria Castle. I got it now. But you know how Queen Braun looks. <laughs> Steiner gets mad. It's hard to believe that she'd have such a beautiful daughter. Ugh! What is this? What are... What is that? What are those? Those... Rotten things. Are they poison? Rotten? I'm not carrying anything that's rotting. Oh, it's your least favorite food. The Lindblom Delicacy. Geishel Pickles. I can't believe how many you brought with you. They are my favorite. I cannot start my day without them. Yeah, sure. People who like them all say that. You can go now. Thank you. Good day. We're inside the gate. Princess, you've done it again. I must find a spot where I won't be seen. That alley looks acceptable, but a girl and a man are in the way. Sigh. I declared bankruptcy and sold my shop. <laughs> Jobless Jeff. It was called Altire. We sold magic items. It's just a regular shop now. Things are strange around here. There are rumors of ghosts. How did Southgate get destroyed anyways? Carpenter Hans. And is it true that the castle welcomed that old airship even after it caused that accident? I wonder what's really going on. I should have taken all my magic items with me when I gave it up. Dude. Oh, there's a chest here. Multana Racket, right? I forgot that's there. Kind of sneaky. What's this guy up to, huh? This gate breaks down a lot because the hinges don't fit very well. This road leads to the bottom of the mist. No one uses it. There's no need to fix it, really. So I just polish up the gate and make it look all nice. That takes care of it for a couple months. Hee <laughs> hee. You were the reason we couldn't come in through this gate. Kill! I almost lost control of myself. Rub a dub, rub a dub dub. <laughs> Ernest young man. Let's see. I need two of model number three. Oh, you brought your things with you. Are you here to work? Remain silent. I indeed. Welcome. I'm also new here. I've been working here for five months as the chief engineer at Bowden Gate. But he's the only one working under me. I'll be going back to the castle next month when my contract expires. I'll be joining a team of engineers who are developing a new engine that runs without mist. The world outside the mist continent is uncharted territory, but there's no need to worry about our safety if we can explore it on an airship. Regent Sid is an advocate of technological advancement. Oh, sorry, I've talked your ear off. There's something I must tell you. The gate to the bottom of the mist has been left broken? Did he think he could get away with that? Excuse me! Now I just need to get rid of that girl. I can't believe he went out of business. Part-time worker Mary. We saw this girl earlier when we were at, uh... Whatchamacallit, Dolly. I didn't know because I was on the other side of the mountain. Don't console her. <laughs> she just gets... freaking Console her. What good is it to bemoan what has already happened? Uh, well, what I meant to say was that... Now that we are here... There must be things we can do to help the ones we love. You're right. I gotta encourage him. Thanks. The coast is clear. So we talk to these guys now. 
I know I'm young and inexperienced, but I'm eager to learn. Yeah, he's young and inexperienced, but he's a freaking chief engineer. Like, jeez. <laughs> Scrub a dub. Oh, can we play cards with him? Nope. I, wonder, I don't think we, we probably can't play cards with anyone here, because. As you can imagine, since this area is, like, kind of sensitive, you know, to plot, you know. Who is this girl? This is my first time talking to him. I wish I'd done it sooner. Hey, hold on. <laughs> I love the slow camera pan over to Steiner. Rules and regulations, you know. Would you come over here? Another slow camera pan. By the way, if you couldn't tell, at this point, you're actually forced to walk, even with a joystick. Stop right there. Don't make a move until I tell you. Whew. You need a gate pass to reach the South Gate Summit. I'm leaving it right here. Pick it up after I leave. I'd come closer, but you're carrying those stinky pickles. See? I'm leaving it right here. I love this little fake out. Receive gate pass. Like, it's so easy to think, like, oh crap, something happened? Nah. Just more pickle crap. A key item received in South Gate. Lindblom's travel passport. Gate pass. Holder of this pass is hereby permitted entry to any territory in the Regency of Lindblom. Sid Bafabul. Alright, let's head on over to the alley. Lindblom. You can see, the, you can kind of barely tell it's. It's like a little like dragon. I think that's like the supposed to be kind of like the falcon claw. Ahem. Tis foolishness. If all was so easy, why none would suffer in this world? Steiner, is it okay for me to come out? Yes. Thank you. I will come out now. Please keep an eye out. Yes. Russell. Russell. <laughs> Russell. Russell. Oh, finally, some fresh air. What a horrible smell. It gave me a terrible headache. Maybe I'll get changed while he's on lookout. Yeah, imagine sitting in a sack full of, like, stinky-ass pickles. Let's see. Continue looking. You can turn around now, Steiner. Princess. Steiner, yes? Oh, um, yes, Miss Dagger. You have to call me Dagger until I reach Treno. Don't salute me either. Yes. Till we reach Trino and find our way back to the castle. I will be careful. Okay, let's go. Trino? Treno? I I think pr traditionally I always pronounce it Trino, but now I'm saying it Treno out loud. I don't know. Wow. That cable car would take us to the summit. We're almost there, Steiner. Alexandria is just beyond the summit, right? I managed it without Zidane's help. You never needed him to begin with, princess. And now that Garnet's here, we can take a look at her stuff, too. Now, unfortunately, we haven't learned Protect yet, but since we have the uh, steeple hat here, it's no big deal. We can slap on the Multana racket. Long-range weapon that holds mysterious powers. Elemental attack win. So, it says long-range weapon. That actually does really mean it's a long-range weapon. Uh, rackets are long-range weapons in this game. They fire off like you... You'll, you'll see what it is when, you know, we use it in fight. But basically, uh, you know, they are a long-range weapon. So, they are basically things that allow Garnet to actually do good damage from the back row. Uh, we can put on a bronze vest or the cotton robe. I think for now, let's slap on the bronze vest because it gives worse defenses. So, we can get jelly. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow, I forgot you can get... You can give her a scan right now. Uh, we'll worry about that later. Because, uh, spoilers, we don't really get into any fights right now. I'll put on cover. Let's see. M Miss Dagger. The gate we just crossed is called Bolden Gate. I love this little graph though. Like, look how much look how much detail into this little guy. Like, look, look how cool this looks. This is just like a little sign you can read. Like, you can see like South Gate. You can see the Dolly Gate, the Herbs Peak Station, the Herb Mountains, the Herb Lindblom Station. You can see the Bowden Gate and where Lindblom is. You can see like Alexandria all the way over there. You can see the deep fog. 
It's got a compass on it and everything. Like, look how cool this map looks. And here we are at Bowden Station, still inside Limblum. Southgate itself is inside Limblum territory, but... The cable car will take us over the Arab Mountains into Alexandria. And this is the Trino Gate, which is where we are heading. Trino, the city of nobles, should not be too far from there. Listen to the itinerary. Nah. Current location, Bowden Station. Wait, what's the itinerary? Is that Steiner's thing? Yeah, okay. I like the use of the little finger. What the hell? Finger? <laughs> Come get your goods. Oh, there's a Moogle here, too. And there's a chest we can open. It's just a potion, but you know, eh, we'll take anything we can get. Southgate is a big place. It's a mountain, actually. You can check that board over there to see where you are. Grimo, can I help you, Koopo? I have a favor to ask, Koopo. Let's deliver a letter to Nazna. Uh, let's check out the shop guy, though. Welcome, welcome. So yeah, we got an item shop here. So the funny thing is, since we've got, you know, the whole bag of sharing, where the items we have here get transferred over to the other part, we can actually go ahead and just buy a bunch of potions, which is probably a good idea, because we're kind of, we didn't, you know, since Garnet's over here, you know, we can't heal them. So, you know, it's a good idea. Do, 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 do. If we try to head back, I shouldn't go back. Yeah, it just tells you not to go back. So yeah, we saw that chest on the thing, that you, but we couldn't climb it because of the thing, which I actually forgot to check. So yeah, you, oh, you can't get that elixir for quite a while. <gasps> Oof. Anyways. Oh, wait. Let's save. Uh, let's do an extra save with the Moogle. This one's actually kind of, you know, a good idea for me because I freaking... That ice staff, I believe, is the 6% still, so I was pretty lucky I got it so quick. Yeah, let's just save here. Southgate, Bowden Star. Man, I love heading to Bowden Star. It's my favorite location. Will you be born? <clears throat> Will you be boarding Berkmia? Board. May I see your gate pass? Okay. Yep, that's the one. We can depart right away if you want. Not yet. We will be departing shortly. Please come back soon. Yeah, let's depart. All right then. Please go inside. We'll be departing shortly. Kim has like a weird habit of doing that. Where like they, they, it's like they take a look at your pass and then they're like, and then they tell you like, oh yeah, you want to go now? Or that you can just deny it, which I always thought was kind of weird. Where would you like to sit? The car is empty, as you can see. Sit wherever you want. Oh, what does he say? The seats on the right look nice and warm from the sun. Yeah, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Let's sit over here. Let's sit here. Please wait while I prepare for departure. Wait, wait for me. Oh, I made it. Thank you for your kind words earlier. No, I thank you. <laughs> Now departing! Phew! I feel more relaxed now. That is understandable. Our journey from Lindblom was very tough, but... It was your white magic that helped me through the battles against all those monsters. Your fortitude that got us past the obnoxious Moogles in Chocobo's forest. And finally, your idea to use Geisho Pickles to get past the Southguard Gates. <laughs> the Southguard Gates! Oh man. Now that's a freaking. I don't even. I, I can't even remember what that's called. The term where it's like you goof, you tongue tie yourself. Ah, uh, the South Gate Guards. I'm thoroughly impressed by your intelligence and courage, Princess. Steiner, you can't call me that. My apologies. I'm just not used to. It's okay. I made lots of mistakes when Zaydane taught me how to talk like this. That peasant had no manners whatsoever. Although. He did have some wit for a bumpkin, but the way he spoke to you was simply unacceptable. I say good riddance. And it shoves us back over here with these guys. Can you stand up? Don't worry about me. Please protect Burr me. And he passes away. I will protect Burmesia. You have my word. And 
And here we are on the other side of Gazamaluk's Grotto. Now, before we do anything, I want to quickly... Since we just got that staff for Vivi... The Ice Staff, Blizzara, and it also gives us slow, funny enough. Has an elemental attack Ice, so funny thing is... Uh, Vivi can actually do some decent physical damage right now, especially because we just got the Magus Hat, which boosts Ice damage. If we fight something that's Ice Weak and Vivi's in front row, he'll do pretty much as much... He'll do more damage than, like, Freya and Zidane do. Uh, we also got some abilities, let me see... Uh, what was it? Yeah, we can swap out the gloves for the Mithril Gloves and get Bug Killer. Bumps up Freya's Evade. Freya's Evade actually is quite high right now thanks to these gloves. Let's see, Bug Killer. Well, because we ha we're getting Bug Killer from that, we can swap that out for the Iron Helm again. Uh... I mean, this gives him this gives Quinn more match defense, but Quinn is not really using magic right now, anyway. So, I mean, not that that increases his magic, but he's you know he she's in front row stabbing stuff, so you know, I'd say it's more helpful. Um, man, Zidane almost has Beast Killer too. Oh, he gets Steel Gill from this too, man. I probably could have swapped that out for something else earlier then. Well, that's fine. No big deal. In fact, you know what? Just for funsies, let's slap Vivi in the front row for now. Because, uh... Oh, actually. Let's see what abilities he has, too. Nah, uh, that doesn't have any abilities. Uh... I'm trying to think. What do I... I think... Blind and Poison are probably good ideas. You don't really need to worry, because you're not going to teach anything else. Anyways. We'll give Zidane, uh... Yeah, Bright Eyes is good. And we'll get rid of Steel Gill, because I'm not I don't have a ton of money right now anyway. I have so much money right now, who cares, right? Alright, now this part's almost over. I wanna say it's over, but actually so Bermesia's to the right there. But I wanna head over to the left first because we can go ahead and do some chocobo stuff right now. Which I wanna do before we finish this part. And we can get some counters here. Hey, more skeletons. That's kinda of funny, because there's other enemies you can fight right now, but the skeletons are kind of a byproduct from this area. Oh, that's funny. When it's when it, we switch areas, we actually swaps the order that we're in here. So Zidane's on the very right now. That actually is going to throw me off. I'm going to swap them back, actually. I kind of like having Vivi on the side. Well, maybe not. I don't know. You know what? Screw it. Let's keep it for now. Let's head over here. We can see this nice-looking twister. Dip -a -dip -a -dip -a -dip -a -dip -a I wonder if we're close enough that we're in the sand now. Yeah, we are. So we'll fight some desert enemies, like these scorpions. Oh, it's a back attack! Oh shit! Well, now Vivi's in the back row anyways. You know, that's that's fine. We'll have Zidane steal and then we'll, since, you know, we got back attack. Let's show off just how insane Vivi is now that he got this ice stuff. I just want you to think about how... Like, just think about, like, before he's been doing, like, around 100 damage to most things, we're gonna group target this, so this is half damage. Watch just how much damage that we're about to do with... Oh, we're getting hit by a pyro, too. That'll do a bit of damage, definitely, yeah, because point is weak. Watch how much freaking damage Fre freaking Vivi does with Blizzard now. These things are weak to ice, by the way. Bam! 600 damage, and if we'd single target, that would've been 1,200. Almost 1,200. Or actually, would that have been... No, that wouldn't almost 1,200. So yeah, that's some damage right there. If you don't steal that staff, it's not too big a deal, because we'll get a staff in Burmesia too, but uh, th it's nice to get this now, especially because with the Magus Hat raising his ice damage, like, that really helps out Vivi's damage. Like, Vivi's, you know, he's gone nuts now. Uh, we got thing for Zidane, right? Yeah, we can slap on the glass armlet. And now he doesn't really need that, so we can go ahead and put on the Gemini's boots for that. And, so, Quenna's getting Insomniac, but we can go over here and, if we really want, we can put on, this gives him more strength, too, but, and it gives him edge defense, so that's nice. Millionaire costs 100 AP, which is, you know, that's a lot, obviously, but, uh, you may be wondering, well, what is a Millionaire? Millionaire is receives more kill after battle, which the description is quite literal. When Quenna 
is in your party and with millionaire equipped, I don't think I think if Quinna dies, it doesn't matter. I think as long as you know she's in the party, it's fine. Millionaire gives you double gill after every fight. And that includes stuff that you get from Steel Gill and like Flea Gill. So as you can imagine, that's really good. And Quinna is at this is actually Millionaire is actually exclusive to Quinna. Only Quinna gets access to Millionaire. So if you didn't need more reason to have Quinn on the party, Quinn is awesome for utility. Quinn gets so many good things right away, like it's nutty. But yeah, we want to head over here. Actually, you know, if we're lucky, we might get an account over here, which might be nice. Let's see. Because there's an enemy over here we can actually eat, potentially. And it's actually a really, and I do mean a really good ability we can get right now if it's... Nope, that's not it. That's the lizard man I was thinking about, though. These guys are weak dice, so what? You know, let's see, for example, how much damage uh, Freya does with an attack right now. Versus Vivi. You know, Freya's doing about 200. Watch how much damage that. Oh, yeah, this encounters a protect. I forgot about that. You know, as you can see, there's a lot. Uh, especially during this like part with during this particular like Burmesian arc, as it you know, I guess I'll call it. A lot of enemies have counter. Like, look, that's as much damage. Like, that's great. Hey, we stole tent. Eh. We'll steal with you. We'll attack with you. And I think... I don't think this thing has anything to steal, but maybe... Or anything to eat it for, but, you know, maybe. Let's see. Nope, it tastes bad. Now, there's another enemy you can find over here. This enemy is actually pretty rare. You can only find it in this area. This, You have to come over here to like this particular part. Where like it's considered like it's the same area as the desert, but it's the grass area. So you get different encounters, obviously. Uh, yeah, Voob Desert. Let's quickly potion up. And yeah, there'll be Chocobo tracks over here. But, uh... Before we end off, I want to find the enemy I'm talking about, so, you know, hopefully we get lucky. We find it soon. Nope. Another lizard man. We're just gonna run. Screw you, lizard man! Hey. So, like you can see, now that we have millionaire equipped, bam, 31G from this guy, instead of, like, I get... Actually, wait, you know what? I guess million, million, you know what? Millionaire does not affect Flea Gill then. I'm wrong about that. I swear it, Maybe Millionaire is 50% more gill? That can't be true. Well, if that thing would give us 21 gill from running and it was 50% rounded down, that would be 31. I swear Millionaire was double gill. Maybe it's only 50% though. You know, I'll look it up after. I always, I'm always, I'm always like half right and then I'm stupid. So yeah, we'll, we'll run around a little longer. Hopefully we can find, uh, the enemy we're looking for. You can usually tell before and before it even shows up just because of the camera. Like, I think this is gonna be. Nope, there's the nymph. There's our buddy. That's my back attack. I forgot how much HP these things have. As you can imagine by the looks of it, they're weak to fire because they're like a plant dude. Oh god, but they. This is actually the ability they have. Knight. This is a field target sleep attack. This puts everything to sleep, including him. I think our spirit stats are higher though, probably, so this is actually probably beneficial. But it's a good cameo of like what knight's like. <laughs> We're just kind of sitting here forever, huh? <laughs> isn't isn't night fun? I love being put to sleep and sitting here for ten minutes. Dip it, dip it. There we go. I mean, let's steal. Uh, since I, I actually, it's pretty awesome that was a back attack because that'll make it uh, make us do less damage. Oh, yeah, it's funny. It's weak to fire, but it has fire out. Ouch! All right, so we'll attack. I don't think it's particularly tough, so I want to be careful. I don't want to kill it, but this should be good right here. Yeah, all right, let's eat it. We learned Knight! Hell yeah! That is an awesome ability, because first of all, 
Like, yeah, it affects us, but, like, let's let's keep, like, you know, you have to keep some things in mind with Knight. Knight is, like, the first ability I think we get that's just, like, it is really good. Because, like, it hits the whole field, obviously. It's, like, it'll put us to sleep, which is, like, okay, that sucks. But we have, we can just equip, you can equip Insomniac to make you immune to sleep. Right? You know, that's an obvious thing. I don't even think it's that much MP. Like, yeah, it's only 14 MP. Like, that's not that much. It causes sleep to all targets. And it's also, like, it's basically, I forget what it is. I think it's, it's base accuracy is 100%, so it can miss because of magic evasion, but that's pretty rare. Uh, what's this called? The East Cistern Coast. That's kind of a cool name, actually. All right, so let's grab the greens, and let's grab ourselves Choco, because... Uh, let's look at uh, the chocograph we can actually have access to now. Healing Shore. I've seen a beach that looks like this near a city with high winds. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Kupo, you already know how to call it chocobos, right? So yeah, if we come to... You can see... Hey, look. Bam. Found a treasure chest. And what's inside this chest? Strange smoke appeared. Getting sleepy. Check out this little trippy sequence. Chocobo's Dream World. Now check out that guy. You can get a little, if you take a look here, you can see kind of an early bird cameo of the chocobos we can be in the future, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Right, you got the light blue, the dark blue, the red one, and uh, the one that's like, kind of a really bright yellow, so like, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, that's gold, obviously. I love the way this place looks, by the way, like, you can see like, the, the little, like, I forget what those things are even called, but it's like the, the thing you use to like, cool someone off, and it's doing it by itself, just kind of slowly. It's like a, you know, sparkling harp. Those who come here seek companions in a home. Choco, you seek a quiet life with other chocobos. Am I right? Wanderer, we await your return. Choco, you now have the ability to cross rivers. You can only get to the lagoon through a beach. The road is long, but you have taken the first step. Yeah, we're light blue chocobo now. Hell yeah. Dreams you can walk around uh, like... He says rivers, but basically it means shallow waters. More specifically. Because uh, that means that we can walk down here. But we'll get blocked as soon as we get to the darker water here. It's actually kind of hard to tell because it's really misty in this area. Uh, and now that we are a ocean choke or a water chocobo, there's a couple areas over here we can see... You still can't really get to any of these places right now, although I say that, but you can get to these two right now. Moving. But we'll save that for next time. So, uh, for now, we're just going to head on back here. I'm going to save in front of the grotto. I'm also going to quickly show up what happens if you approach the desert here. If you approach it, it says, The sandstorm is too fierce! And yeah. So we're going to go ahead and head over here. To the grotto. We're gonna use a tent. Oh, actually, you know what? No, 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 no. We'll, we'll check out this scene first. Just, like, one last little story thing. This is optional, because it's a gate, obviously, once again. But, uh, you know, might as well check it out. You know, I'll have one last little thing before we finish. The smell of fire and blood. There must have been a huge battle on the other side of that gate. So, this never really gets mentioned, but, like, you can kind of look at this place on the map and stuff. Basically, you remember that first gate we saw way back when we first exited Evil Forest and we could buy potions from that lady? This is basically the other side of the gate, which is, you know, why when we got there, right, we saw, you know, Alexandrian's War Banner. And this is the other side of the gate, which also has, like, you know, stuff happening. Something smelled bad. I get bad feeling. Flowers smell good. You smell flower. Quenna does whatever she he feels like doing. I must learn from his ways. I don't think it's intentional, Freya. 
No, if I'd done as I pleased, I would have been... Zidane, this flower tastes good. See what I mean? But still... Let's go. Bermesia is just ahead. Yeah, there's a couple of treasure chests over here. Receive 10. So yeah, it's funny. This scene is optional, but it's also like, even though it's optional, he bothered to make it like a Quinna thing. So yeah, presumably, uh, the reason why we saw the war banner up is because this is basically where Alexandria just went ahead and marched their army through to the other side to attack Bermesia. You can't ever go through here, I don't believe. Well, I, I say I don't believe. I know for a fact you can never go through here. This area looks really cool, too. Like, you can see, like, this little, like, area to the side here. Like, this is basically, like, you can say Burmese architecture. You can kind of see just right there. Can, it's, it's a little hard to make out, but you can kind of see, like, the walls, like, broken there. Which is very cool. And you can see all the footprints on the ground. Like, it's it's very, it's very you know, good, good you know, environmental storytelling. You know, all that jazz. Anyways, it's gonna Choco, head on back over to the entrance of the grotto, which is right over here. We're gonna use a tent, and we're gonna go ahead and save and quit, because this will be it for this part. We got 13 tents, so we got plenty to spare. Anyways, yeah. Do a nice hard save here. Slot one. File 10. How many files do you get? I think you get... Oh, you get 10. <laughs> Data from another game. That's funny. I wonder where that's even from. But, uh, yeah. Anyways. Dane. I love the names. I should have been checking out some of these names. So, like, Dane's Horse Basin. Like, such great names. Anyways, yeah. See you guys later.